She's still a vintner, even when she's not making wine. Oh, that's right. She ran a business that required making things that taste good. <laughs> she's got a great palate. The entrepreneur. Is she an honest woman? What in Israel? Did you catch that? What in Israel instead of what, what on the earth? World? Yeah, what, on, <laughs> <laughs> what in Israel? <laughs> wow. Wow. What in Israel? <laughs> they are so funny. So, are we allowed to... Messer you know that God came into the universe to grace the fruit of the vine. I'm drinking wine right now? Uh, apparently. <laughs> that wouldn't be my first choice after hard labor. Have you ever had a nice swig of wine after working around the house a little sounds, bit, doing some carpentry, sounds terrible. some masonry? It does sound terrible. <laughs> he said the blessing, the bore pre, like he did oh, as the creator of the vine. I'm, so. ass I'm assuming there's a blessing for water, but it's I don't probably know. Probably not the Bore. There's no fresh water. That's why they're fixing the system. Oh, oh. they're fixing it because uh, there's no water. There's got to. They have to have water somewhere, surely. No. They had to walk outside of town. Oh, oh no. right, right. They had the water. So when all you got is wine, right? It's true. You do as the Romans do. I I have heard. <laughs> When in when with Romans, mm. no. <laughs> I have heard that in the early American West, mm -hmm. that they would oftentimes drink alcohol, because it was like the alcohol you knew was clean. Oh wow! But water was you weren't always sure how clean the water was, so they would drink a lot of alcohol. Interesting. So I don't feel like that would hydrate you very well. Right. <laughs> There's water in alcohol, right? Indeed. <laughs> I was, like when you fill up that that pitcher of coffee every morning, yeah. you know, and people are like, oh, you're not drinking enough water. I'm like, I put like a I put water, water in, in my there. coffee every morning before I make it. Actually, the portions are you know, right. pretty in favor of the it's a water. A lot of water. <laughs> Take me to him. You know of whom I speak. I need him now. Hmm. I don't know where he is. You have an idea? You know people who know. His men often don't know where he is. But I will take you to them. I think they're setting up this situation really well. I mean, there's there had to be a ton of really bad, horrible emotional situations surrounding mm -hmm. this healing, right. right? And so for Jairus to come to this point of desperation to seek out this supposed messiah, right. like this they're doing a good job of this. I'm getting excited. I know, me too. Right? Me too. You're like, oh, I was excited on. last episode. Right. And I was kind of upset that they didn't happen. Exactly. You know? <laughs> but no, yeah. I, I just, I just think that they're painting the picture of the, uh, the emotional desperation of a father with a dying right. child. Like, oh, wow. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Well, that's like the theme of the episode. Yeah. It's a dying child. Right. Andrew. But who are you? I'm new here. I'm the Capernaum Synagogue ruler. I must speak with Andrew's rabbi. He's my rabbi too. <sighs> Take me to him. I don't know where he is. And even if I did, I wouldn't be at liberty to disclose Shalom. <laughs> my daughter's name is Neely. She's 12 years old and her eyes are closed right now. But not forever. It cannot be forever, do you hear me? I'm, I'm very sorry. If you have blood in your veins, you must help me. Mm -hmm. Look, all I can tell you is that you might consider asking Andrew's brother. I never really thought about how it would be for the disciples <laughs> as this, quote, intermediary, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. That, that they're like, where is he? You know, and like, ah. And he, like, he would go off to lonely places to pray right. and, and things like that. And I mean, there's a, there is like, uh, some situations in the Gospels where the crowds are trying to find him. Right. It seems like often right. he's like getting away or going in the boat and going across the sea. He or... didn't post his itinerary online. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! 
Next Shabbat right. in Bethsaida. Hey. <laughs> He's on a preaching tour. Right. And you can wow. follow him for you know from city to city. Wow. You know? It's true. Yeah. Which kind of helps paint the picture a little more right. of being a first century disciple and like mm-hmm. hearing about who he is and mm-hmm. like you're like, where is he gonna show right. up next? Wow. Well, right? created a hunger for sure. For sure. Wow. Well, you fasted while you were away? No, just overnight. Eight hours. That's why they call it breakfast. breakfast. <laughs> wow. Was he making a joke? I think so. <laughs> a fasting joke. <laughs> that did not just happen. Wow. They're all like, he's so spiritual, he fasted. How long have you been fasting? Oh, eight, just, hours. eight hours. Wow. <laughs> wow. You know, Rabbi, I haven't mean to ask you about fasting. Thing I'm very happy not to be doing right now. John required us to fast at regular intervals. He said the sacrifice of fasting is integral to any serious commitment to God. And yet, you've never once asked any of us to fast. Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days are coming. The bridegroom will be taken away from them. Then they will fast. Taken away? Hold that thought. Hmm. When you fasted before, what did you pray for? Your arrival. Right, so what would be the point now? Exactly. Eden, do you have any wine fermenting right at the moment? Uh, yes, in the back room. Little James, can you please take down that empty wineskin? Sure. Ooh, I feel a lesson coming. (laughs) (laughs) Eden, when you last checked on the wine, what was it doing? What it always does at this stage, um, sort of bubbling, popping out little plumes of air now and then. James, how does that wine skin feel? Uh, stiff, not very flexible. So if Eden were to put her new wine into that container, what would happen? I don't know. The old leather can't stretch anymore. The new wine would keep expanding and it would explode. And so new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. I'll be the first one to admit that. I don't, I don't get it. The waves of the kingdom I am bringing into this world will not fit into old containers or frameworks. I love how they used fasting and then also this use of uh, the wine and the wineskins and coming to the feast and all this because, you know, oftentimes when Yeshua is teaching, he teaches in these parables or these stories that they don't always, they're not easily understood. For sure. And even right here, you see the disciples wrestling, like what, like what is he saying? And they have these almost funny comments because they right. don't... They're not quite getting it. Right. But this is how Yeshua taught, which honestly, it's so much different than how we teach today. Oh, man. Where it's not like, let's kind of simplify this. Yeah. Let's tell them what we're going to say. Let's say it. And then let's tell them what we've said. Let's give them a, mm-hmm. a, a take home. Exactly. You know, right. a, a practical application. A practical application. Right. No, Yeshua, he's like, tells a parable or tells you this story. And then it's like, it it makes you think and yeah. wrestle and ponder. And I would say it, it's creating hunger mm, even, which is the cool, the yeah. connection here with fasting. It's like, mm. he, Yeshua's teaching creates hunger. And I feel like hunger is one of the most difficult things that you can actually impart to people. Right. You can't, like so many people are satisfied yeah. with the things of this world. They're satisfied with their life or whatever, yeah. at least in, in the West and mm. in, in the golden age yeah. of America. But like Yeshua's teaching caused this hunger to arise. Mm. I like what you're saying because I don't know, the, the parables, sometimes they're difficult. Sometimes they're like, even even now you're reading through it and you're like, right. like I've read that wine, wineskins mm-hmm. passage many times and sure. been like, you right. know, like, what does that mean? You right. know? And, but I like what you're saying because if you, if Yeshua was to just make it plain all the time, right. it's like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't perpetuate 
this right. even what we what we've been talking about like mm-hmm. we're not we don't know where he is right right it's like mm-hmm. go find him right so seek the yeah the the parable is the go find him and the greek there is actually it's like keep seeking right keep knocking yeah keep asking yeah right it's this mm-hmm. this relational reality where it's not like Perpetual. oh i know him now and i'm good right <laughs> you think of your spouse or something or yeah. your friend yeah it's not like oh i know sam now and so no we don't need to hang out anymore good. you know it's like yeah. no you you continue to pursue you continue to get right. to know them because you want to yeah so. and, it, and it gets better Right. It's like, well, it's like, like wine. It right. gets better with age. Right. Right. And it's like relationships get better as you go. Right. It's like hunger where you, your hunger is, you satisfied, but then not that much later, you're yeah. hungry again. Right. right. That's Spe- why it's the keep seeking. Especially if you eat sushi. You're always hungry really fast. <laughs> <after sushi. laughs> especially, or especially matzo. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed our messianic reaction videos and you want to go deeper in your understanding of God and the Bible, you can take our upcoming course at Grafted You, an introduction to a biblical messianic worldview. And we're offering you a special 20% discount right now. So if you want to find out more information and you want to register for the course, check out the link in the description below. My daughter is dying. I'm so sorry. But come, come and lay your hands on her and she will live. You've never met me, yet you have this much faith that I can heal your daughter. I know you. Please. Oh, it was? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> it was kind of hard to see in the dark. I didn't, rec- I didn't recognize yeah. her. <laughs> that's, where the ten- that- <laughs> that's where the tension is between oh. Eden and Simon because she had a miscarriage and he wasn't there. And she didn't tell him about it and he didn't know. And I don't know why she's not telling him, but... Right. So... They're showing Eden's face as she sees Yeshua going to heal this other, right? Oof. They're kind of doubling down on the not everybody gets healed right. reality. You have a religion? Who, me? No, the Romans. You have uh, gods, festivals, no? Yeah, sure. But not anything like you. Just... Parties, auspices. We have parties too. <laughs> From what I can tell, they do not look as fun as ours. <laughs> Depends on their definition. Quick side note. Mm-hmm. I remember one time I was in college and I was with some guys and somebody was uh, making a comment and they said, see, our God's way more fun than your God. And it's always stuck with me. Like, what was that person? It was a, it was a kind of a snide remark, you know, but I was like, but that, that's not true. You know, mm-hmm. right? And so there, he, there's this like interesting conversation going on, right? Mm-hmm. He's like, our, our, our gods are way more fun than yours, right? Mm-hmm. But I think even like what we were talking about earlier about relationship, like relationship with the one true God is this like, it's this beautiful, mysterious, like exciting, mm-hmm. like life in the kingdom is mm-hmm. the best life. Deeply satisfying. Right. And so even enjoyment and pleasure, it's it, C.S. Lewis has this wonderful quote about the pleasures that that man get, you know, infatuated with. And he's like, you know, I think you taught on this one time. He's like, he's like, yeah, it's not that your desires are too strong. It's actually that they're not strong enough. (laughs) Right. And it's like, you get too distracted with the things that people call fun. Mm -hmm. And actually the pleasures of loving God are way more than you can even dream or imagine. Even greater. And so 
It's just that we get we get placated a little too easily. Right. Right. When you there's this eternal pleasure, this eternal right. delight, mm -hmm. eternal reality of joy right. mm -hmm. in the kingdom of God right. that's available to anyone. Right. And the the deception is right. that the things of the world, the things of sin are actually more fun. Right. Don't sell yourself short for the pleasures right. of this world. There's right. something way more pleasurable right. in God, right? right? Yeah. Which I like that even right now, you saw this excitement come out of the street right. corner. It's excitement. Right? Yeah. And so they're talking about this stuff and then all of a sudden, right. Yeshua's on a scene. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. right? And it's like, excitement yeah, right exactly like the, the the king is here right. it's nothing better than that so. nothing else satisfies like right. knowing that there's this this supernatural intervention into humanity through a miracle right yeah, I mean, exactly exactly <laughs> like what better than your wildest like dreams yeah. you know right. it's like because he's the creator knows us mm -hmm so well mm -hmm. and what we need and what you know what satisfies right because right? we have this eternal longing in within us that mm -hmm. only he can satisfy right so anyway it's just yeah. it was a it's an interesting side note right and there's a longing in people for the supernatural yeah for sure i mean you even look in hollywood and so yeah. many of the films are about the supernatural they're it's about the demonic yeah. they're about even marvel studios it's it's all about yeah supernatural things beyond mm -hmm. you know this world and the people are really interested in that right and that's right. because whether you love the one true god or not people have interactions mm -hmm. in the unseen world yeah. and there's this desire there's eternity written in your heart there's this desire for something beyond this age yeah. beyond this world right. right right and the only thing that can satisfy that is the one true god exactly that's he put it in us yeah. So that we would never truly be satisfied yeah. without him. Exactly. That's yep. how he created us. Yeah. Let us pray for you. Come back, I promise. I promise. Give us three back. Give us some space. This is kind of how I envisioned it. Yeah. Come on. Super crowded. Crazy. Simon's house. We need to get through. Come back. Our rabbi has a pressing job. It's him. It's your rabbi. Stay here. Our rabbi has a pressing matter ahead. Nope. <laughs> Not happening. <laughs>
That was awesome. <laughs> What's going on? What's on? Whoever touched me, come forward. Teacher. It was me. Just the fringe of your garment, only the edge, I promise. You are not unclean. Why my garment? I'm sorry. I, I know I shouldn't have asked. But if if you touched me, it would make you ritually unclean according to the law. Uh, I was sick. I was sick for 12 years. I bled and, and, and no one could stop it. <laughs> but, but I believed if I could just touch a piece of your garment. <laughs> and I was right. I was right. Thank you. <laughs> Who told you I could heal? Uh, a man from the pool. And he was right. The blood is ceased. My daughter. Mm. I'm no one's daughter anymore. Look up. Yes, you are. Daughter. It wasn't my piece of clothing that healed you. <clears throat> but it was instant. I felt it right away. I know. But it wasn't this. It was your faith. Teacher, she was pleading so long, we could take her. She is clean. <laughs> you have blessed me today. And I know. My daughter, I know it has been a fight for you for so long. You must be exhausted. Go now in peace. Your faith has made you well. I wish I could stay here longer. But I have business to attend to. Someone else has faith like yours. This is like... One of my favorite scenes. I know, right? <laughs> this is so good. This is awesome. And also it just got me connecting this reality where he says, you want me to leave essentially <laughs> so that I can send my comforter. Mm -hmm. I can send my Holy Spirit yeah. because he can be everywhere. Right. He can right. be right. in and on and speak to everyone all at once. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, the God manifesting in the man of Yeshua, but he limited himself, mm -hmm. it says in Philippians, right? right? Right. Like taking the form of a bond servant, right. you know? Right. And so like, I don't know, this may be just long for the mm. outpouring of the Holy Spirit, good, right? It's good. I mean, it's like, oh, more, right? Because you could mm -hmm. see the more, like looking at, at yeah. Jairus and the next miracle to come. Right. So many people connect the healing in Yeshua's tzitzi mm -hmm. to Malachi. Hmm. Chapter 4, verse 2, it says this, But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. Hmm. The wings here, they hmm. connect the Hebrew word there to being the end or the hem hmm. of the garments. Wow. So this is this connection. And so it became, became this expectation of that there would be healing wow. in his wings, in the wings of the Messiah, if you will. Wow. I love this because, you know, she grabs the fringe of his garment here. Hmm. And, but this begins this whole wave of miracles, like word spreads. Right. <laughs> and if you look in Mark uh, chapter six, the last verse 56, it says, and wherever he came in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him 
that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. Right. And as many as touched it were made well. Hmm. <laughs> I love this. It's so good. So this is the the fringes are also in Hebrew it's called the tzitzit mm-hmm. or the tzitziot. These fringes that represent uh, the commandments uh, of God represent the Torah, God's instructions mm-hmm. that they carry with them to remind themselves right. of following God's uh, commandments. And yeah. so that there's this connection here between the word of God and the power of God. Mm, that's good. Right? Yeah. So I do think it's likely that Yeshua wore yeah. fringes on his garments like they're showing here. Mm-hmm. And the reason is because, you know, not only do we know this was a custom in the first century, but you know, in Matthew 23, Yeshua says that he's critiquing the Pharisees, but he says, don't make your fringes long. Mm. And so he's not saying don't ever wear fringes. Sure. He's not saying don't wear seats. He's just saying, don't make them this long. Don't make them this big show to everyone to mm. show how religious or pious or something that you are. So I do think it's a good chance likely that as this Torah observant Jew, he wore tzitzit. Right. Plus, then you have this story of this woman. <laughs> right. So to me, it's like you connect the dots. It makes sense. And when you look in the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament, the, the word in Greek here that for the fringes mm-hmm. is the same word they translate tzitzit in Hebrew in the Torah. Got it. Yeah. So you you link the the Greek translation back to the Hebrew yeah. <laughs> if you're following me using the Greek of the New Testament and it's actually the same word. Yeah. So to me this is like almost for sure he was actually wearing fringes. Mm. So in fact when I lived in in Jerusalem this is what I would mention oftentimes to Israelis, <laughs> right, right. they would say, well, why are you here? Why why would you move your, your family here? Uh, and I said, because I'm here studying about the Jewishness of Yeshua mm-hmm. and the fact that he was a Torah observant Jew. Right. And they would be like, well, what do you mean? And oftentimes I would say, he wore tzitzio. Mm-hmm. He wore the fringes and they're like, uh-huh. what? <laughs> right? Because right. Jesus doesn't get portrayed as this Jewish man oftentimes. Right in you know christian history and so they don't they think he's like the god of another religion yeah right they don't know oftentimes that he's this jewish man Mm -hmm. and living right the the scriptures Mm -hmm. and obeying god's word so it's significant and that's why i think this scene is so powerful you're seeing the continuity of scripture Yeah. yeah you're seeing this this perfect man of God living this perfect law, living yeah. the scripture out in flesh, right? Mm-hmm. Incarnate. Uh, and wow, it's powerful. And yet there's this like situation happening, right? right. It's like we're in the we're in the middle of to going to Jairus' house. Right. Right? And so I don't want to keep going because the story just gets better. It's like I indeed came to the right man. Well, between you and her, it's quite a big day of faith. Just up ahead. Mm. I've I never thought about. My mind goes to the timing of this. It's a it's, you feel strapped for time. There's a lot going on. Right. I never thought about Jairus Watch. seeing this woman get healed. Yeah. And how that might have like even increased his expectation. Totally. He's like she's getting healed. Right. For sure, I, I never thought about that. <laughs> I didn't either. Right now. That's so good. Yeah. Like he's like. I'm seeing this woman get healed. My right. daughter needs healed. This is going to happen. Right. Right. He's really believing it now. I, right. I, right. You hope <laughs> I mean, so, right? Because because Yeshua is coming. Yeah. He's like, coming. He's on his way. What would that trip, that walk have been like? Oh, my gosh. Like, and so many emotions because your daughter's like dying. And like, right. Or like, oh. Right. So I, I, anyway, I just never, I never thought about him right. watching this woman That's get good. healed. Paris, while you were gone. No. Why do I hear mourners and flutes? I said not to do that. She was sick. daughter passed away. We had to make arrangements quickly. No, no, I went to find the teacher. He was going to heal her. I know who you are. Let's not trouble him anymore. Michal is with Millie's body. No. No, I was kidding, Jesus. I went as fast as I could. Do not be afraid. Only believe. 
she will be well. Jairus. Jairus. Let's go in. Please stay here. We will she will be well. I had to think he was crazy. I know, right? All of you, stop it! I said stop. What are you doing? There's a girl. She's dead. Go away. For she isn't dead, but sleeping. <laughs> what is all this laughing? He said she's only asleep. What a cruel thing to say. Do you know who you're talking to? If you were a member of the family, I would invite you in to see just how dead she is. What are you, a necromancer? Shame on you for saying such a ridiculous thing. Everyone out. You heard him. Boys, take everyone outside. They, they portrayed that well, I think, because he ordered everyone out. They laughed at him. Right. And they had to get everybody out of that out of that building. Right. right? And so I don't like there's there's some awkward tension right. happening for sure. But I was wondering, because it says in the text that they laughed at him. Right. I was wondering how they were gonna do that. And so right. I just, you know, like he's he's coming up in a in, into an impossible situation. Right. And so yeah, this is And it's interesting that you know, there was this, the last miracle mm -hmm. five minutes ago, uh -huh. right, was, I mean, what a day, right? <laughs> oh, man. The last miracle was so public. Yeah. Right? right. It's like all right. the crowds are gathered yep. and she's like, I mean, it, and then this one, it's like, which in some senses, I don't want to say it's more miraculous. You can't, I don't know how you compare. <laughs> right. But it's like, he wants everybody to leave. Mm -hmm. And he's like, only Peter, James, and John. Mm hmm Right, which is mm -hmm. also interesting. Mm -hmm. He like he yeah. picks the three, right, and he's like, "Come with me." Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't, so the more miraculous in some sense is more private, right? And yet, I don't know. Again, I don't know. I'm not so comfortable with more miraculous, but life from sure. the dead's a right. really big it's, deal. It's a really big deal, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So like, uh, it's so yeah. so exciting though, yeah. and so it's, you know, it's like clash. It's for like sure. it is a clash of sure. light and dark and life and death mm -hmm. and. And so much, yeah, and yeah. just this declaration of who he is too, mm -hmm. right? I mean, this is screaming to the crowds and the religious leaders and the right. politicians and the Romans, and yep. they're capturing it all. They you are. know, like they are. wow. So in his in his words, his words in contrast with their words, right. she's dead. He's like, just believe, right? She's but only she, sleeping. She's dead. Just believe, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. He's like, pay attention to right. me. Stay right. focused on me. Right. Like the important part is paying attention right, right here, not on what's right. supposedly happening. Right. So and it reminds me how, like in Thessalonians, it talks about how, oftentimes where it talks about the saints, mm -hmm. when it says that they're sleeping. Hmm. Right. Right. It's right. like because we have this anticipation of the resurrection. Yeah. It's like even if we do die, right. it's as if we're only sleeping because we will rise again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I love that we're even seeing this. Because we serve the living God. Right. No. What are you doing? Please. room please listen to me carefully Simon James John Jairus Michal and Nili none of you are to say a word about this to anyone under any circumstances 
Whatever you command, we shall do. <laughs> Neely, you must be hungry. <laughs> How can I thank you? I, I don't understand what you did, but... You're welcome. I'll just get Neely something to eat first. Oh, wait. <laughs> Neely, come on up. <laughs> There are no other words. But thank you. Thank you for your faith. I pray that more in the synagogue will share it. I liked Jairus's response. I did too. I did too. That's that like, was... I feel like that's... Yeah. It's like in, you would just have no words. It would just be like, what else can you say but thank you? Like, just, what else? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just sort of fall on your knees, you know? Like, right. It's like, I feel like his responses have been really beautiful. Right, I agree. When he first saw him, he fell on his knees. Right. This, thank you. It reminds me of like, Hodu l'adonai kitov, mm. ki le'olam chasto. It's like, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, steadfast love endures forever. Mm. It's like this, it's like this phrase and this song that's repeated throughout scripture. Over and over. Over and over again. And so like, what give, else can you do? Right. But give thanks. Give for thanks. he is good. Yeah. You know, his love and endures forever. Mm. And so that's like, Jairus' response is a proper response. Right. Uh, that, that, that portrayal of it, you know. So good. And it's, it is interesting because he commands, I mean, in the text it says, he, he says, tell no one, right? It's like, don't tell anybody about this. Right. But like, word probably still got uh, out. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> you know, a little girl that was dead is now right. running around and right. she's fine, yeah. you know, and so. And these aren't towns of a million people. Right. It's like a couple thousand. Right. You know, or right. maybe 10,000 or 20,000 at the so most, you it's, know. It's interesting. <laughs> he'll do that a few times in the text. Right. Like he'll, he'll say, don't, don't tell anyone about this. And then even one time somebody totally disobeys right. <laughs> and tells everything, yeah, right. you know? So it's well, like, well, and even the crowds, they were all following. Yeah. So, I mean, the word's going to get out. It's going to get out. So. The word's going to get out. <laughs> That was a good way to end the story of Veronica. <laughs> you know? right, 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 right. Like, how cool is that? You know, there is that Catholic tradition of her name being Veronica. Mm -hmm. It is cool in that sense of like bringing her to life. Yeah. You know, in some sense, the chosen is just carrying on the, the Catholic tradition <laughs> of trying to make mm. her more human right. and, and put a, a name to a story. and. Mm. And now a face right. to the story, you right. know? Yeah. So I'm glad they though they ended it with this ritual. I mean, it wasn't really a ritual immersion, but kind of. I mean, the highest form uh, of ritual immersion was a river. Hmm. You know, sometimes it was living because the living water, right? Right. They yeah. had different. At least in the rabbinic Jewish understandings, there were different levels of purity of the water. Hmm. And so you know, you could collect the water mm -hmm. uh, in you know different pools that they would immerse in around the temple or whatever, but then the highest purity would mm -hmm. be a river. Nice. Yeah. So then Yeshua, he's immersed, he's mm -hmm. baptized in the highest purity, which is the Jordan mm -hmm. River. Right. I don't know what may or may not have happened in there, but did you touch a corpse? Go see for yourself. <laughs> I've also just been told you touched a woman who was bleeding. She wasn't bleeding anymore. How could you know for sure? Are we really having this conversation? You've got no right to question him. You and anyone you have touched are ceremonially unclean until sundown and must carry out the rituals of purification. I love this one. Like, I, this is funny. I'm convinced this happened. Right? Because, <laughs> because it's like, he's like, well, she's not dead. What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, like, <laughs> she was dead. It's like, but if she was dead, then why is she alive? You right. know, it's like, then they'd have to admit that 
he rose her from the dead, right? Proofs and in the pudding. They can't admit that. Right. And then same thing with the bleeding. Well, then... If she, why is she not bleeding anymore? Right. <laughs> like, right. It's, just, it's like I this, love this. It's a conundrum. For it is them, a conundrum. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Had to have had a conversation. Oh, like this, for right? sure. You know. Right. <laughs> A sad note, like we were doing so well, Chosen. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was enjoying the moment. Man, why do we have to leave with the sadness? Because the plot has to thicken. Man. <laughs> If you like our videos, please help us spread a biblical messianic worldview by donating to Grafted. You know what they say, broken cisterns, more wine. I don't think they say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I, I, can I say one more no, comment before we move on? No, we're finished with this.